<laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to EdTech Team Sessions on Air. We are joining Michael Wacker live from Redondo Beach, California. Redondo Beach, today we're at. We are going to go through 30-plus uh, forgotten buckets of delicious awesomeness with uh, <laughs> Officer Michael Wacker from EdTech Team. Uh, if you're watching online, you can join us, uh, hashtag Summit, and you can chat to all the beautiful people in the room. You can also uh, come to the event page on Google Plus and share any cool tidbits or your favorite part, um, and also Twitter at EdTechTeam. So stay in the conversation. I'll be moderating on the Q&A um, on the live page and uh, sending Michael any questions right now. But thanks again, Michael, and have fun, guys. Word. Thanks, Winters. <clears throat> All right. So you already heard uh, the, the title name. It's quite um, embarrassing. So as you guys know, day two into the se uh, summit, session titles can be deceiving, and this one is as well. Um, there's actually like 55 uh, buckets of Googleicious awesomeness that we're going to share. So this is my favorite session. Um, you guys saw the demo slam yesterday. You saw how everybody kind of got excited showing some cool things or things that they thought you know would be cool. Uh, for you to use in the classroom and whatnot, and this is like a big old demo slam. So, but much faster pace and no dongle dance. Promise. All right, all right. So if you want to uh, play along at home, this is the uh, view only or the view version of uh, the slide deck. <laughs> it is case sensitive. Um, you are more than welcome to make a copy of this if you want to take it back to your school, share it with your students, or you can keep this copy. And then if I make changes, it stays uh, stays with it, stays iterative. So, oh okay, truck. All right. Let's see, you guys need one more second on this. Uh, it's also on the uh, on the resource page. There's two of them. There's one that has just links directly, and then there's the other one that has uh, the slide deck link. All right. Ready? Word. Okay, so that was the first one, gwo.gl. So uh, that is a Google shortener. We've been using a lot of shorteners yesterday. Um, there are so many. Um, there's one that's not Googleicious. It's called Shady URL. I'm just mentioning it to you. If so if you use it, it's uh, quite funny. It takes your regular URL and makes it not look like it's appropriate. Um, but this one is appropriate. <laughs> and this one will, uh, like, for example, last night, I think it said Twitter hack underscore dot exe was my uh, URL that I sent somebody to. And they're like, I don't think that's really where the restaurant is, Wacker. Uh, I'm not going to open that. So, But this URL shortener gives you, let me see if I zoom in for you guys here gives you the ability to kind of not only go in and look at uh, which URLs you've shared, how many people clicked on it, but if you go into the details, you go a little bit deeper and see how many people clicked on it, where they clicked on it from, as well as what platform they were using. And then also a QR code. And that's uh, gwo.gl. It's a standalone website. It's also an extension that you can add to your browser. Okay. <clears throat> the next one, and the category, so to speak, is the WIFM. What's in it for me? Try to kind of put these into spots like, will I use this for school or work? Is this more for just me having fun? Is this just for fun? Um, or is this to create and build? This, this uh, next handful of slides is going to be, um, what's in it for me? Google Plus, it is a, your personal social network, like plus you. It's personal to you, meaning it differs from other uh, social networks. You don't have to uh, reciprocate if somebody follows you or likes you or anything like that, you can uh, kind of put people in the buckets, quote unquote, that you want. Like for example, if I go into just my Google Plus homepage, oh, full transparency, awkward moment there. Okay. <laughs> um, you can see here that I can choose not only where my feed comes in, so all education peeps, family, Sunset Way, and more, but I can also, if I post something, I can choose where it goes out as well. So right here I can say, do I want this to go to public? Do I want this to go to just one of my individual circles? Now the cool thing is, so let's say you guys all put me in a circle today. Okay? If I post anything public, you'll see it. You'll have access to it. It'll be just like as if we were uh, friends on Facebook. If I post something that's to, say, any of these circles, unless you're in one of those, you're not going to see it. 
So it was one of those things when I, uh, in the classroom, I wanted to be able to separate my student stuff and my work stuff. This is kind of a good way to do that even within, uh, within the domain. So you get to choose kind of where it goes. Of course, you can add photos, links, videos. And then you get to name and choose and decide what name you want your circles to be, and no one knows what circle you put them in. So if you put somebody in the close talker circle, <laughs> or in the people to avoid circle, <laughs> I'm not opening that because there's a chance they might be here, um, or online. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> awkward. Yeah, awkward again. Yeah, sorry. That's going to keep happening, I think. So, um, and then the next uh, feature that, why I say it's plus you, if you go into your profile, so if somebody Googles you and finds your profile, you have uh, ownership over kind of how much of that is shared. So if I come in and I say, all right, here's my profile about me. This is kind of your story, your introduction. But at each one of these elements, you can do two things. You can view the profile as either yourself or as a circle or as somebody from the public. Or you can change and edit each one of these individual features, like bragging rights. I'm a campfire building ninja with a proficiency for high levels of energy. <laughs> Right? So you can kind of create these uh, and decide who can see all this stuff. This gets useful down here when you get into your personal stuff. So if I wanted to, as I broadcast live where I live, um, I could, <laughs> it used to just be friends and family knew that information. Uh, <laughs> but the cool thing about that is, let's say anybody that's in those circles Googles me. right? In Google, it would actually say, here's his phone number, here's his address, if they're in that circle. right? They wouldn't actually have to have a contact uh, book. So thinking about it, you could eventually <laughs> really. Not real. Illegal. <laughs> was that you, Wendy? It was. <laughs> uh, you know what I like about you, Wendy? <laughs> what, Michael? what, Michael? Nothing. Ah! Nothing at all. Oh, that's too mean. We have 21 viewers. You just lost like 20. <laughs> oh no, I'm playing. But you get to choose who sees that stuff all the way down. Okay, so it really is about you. The other thing that I love, and you notice that uh, we're using it here at the event, are the events. You can create an event for anything, be a class, a year-long class even, if you wanted to make the event. But you have the options then from here to choose, like, if I accept this event, I can turn on what's called, uh, um, whoa, I just lost it. What's it called? Oh. <laughs> party mode. No, it's called party mode on your phone. And if you accept the invitation, every picture you take from the moment that you check in to the moment that you leave or the, the ex time that the event goes on, they automatically will get uploaded to a shared uh, photo um, album for you and whoever else is at that event. So like for us, we have this event going on right now. And you can quickly see that it's not just photos, but if you're in a session, you can hop in there and say, I'm sharing this or I'm learning about this. <clears throat> or if you take your own picture, you can upload it. And, Drop it in there. So, very cool. Lots of photo booth pictures are uh, in the event page. And you can choose, if you wanted to, to add guests, make a post, all that good stuff. Now, the next kind of segue from there would be something that used to be part of Google+, Plus, but is now has been uh, parsed out on its own, and that's Google+, Plus Photos. So, it's just photos now. Uh, and photos have a lot of uh, really cool features. If you look at it, just even that image says, all your photos from any device, whether it's your computer, your mobile, your tablet, just like iCloud, uh, backed up automatically for you. But then there's this thing that they call the assistant. And the assistant is going to go to work for you as soon as you upload a picture. In fact, it's going to be working even when you don't know. So for example, if I come over here and I say I want to go to my assistant, oh, I'm all caught up. <laughs> but <coughs> your assistant will automatically create and build stories, collections based on geographical area or where you are location-wise. So you see, as soon as I left my house, it started to create a story, a collection of pictures that were all uh, at this event. Even as something as simple as like this uh, trip to Frisco, we just went camping this weekend. <clears throat> it's worth it. Wait for it. Here it goes. It automatically created this story for me. Yes, ma'am. Is there a risk of it showing up? No, unless you just proved me wrong. Okay, <laughs> no, it, it should be, uh, it's private to only you. So as soon as I left my house, the first picture I took, they're like, okay, let's put that in. And then as soon as I got back, that was the last picture that they took. And so it's not just 
creates the uh, cover for you. But also, what's going on? Here we go. There it is. <clears throat> so there's your story. It starts to say, all right, you started here, you went there. And I know that some people are now getting a little uncomfortable, like this is weird. It's actually tracking you and taking a picture and saying, hey, you were at this campground, took this picture. But here's the cool thing is it's going to also stitch these, thing, these multiple images together for me automatically and create a panoramic view. And she adorable. Winders, there's your girl. What up, Kenzie? <laughs> right? And so it automatically created this each day separated by its own story. Um, and so what this looks like in Google+, Plus, okay, if I come up here and say I wanted to do a search, I'm going to search for what was called Auto Awesome, okay? And so what Auto Awesome is, is like I said, it takes all your pictures and backs them up, but then it also not only will create collections, but it will... will bundle together multiple pictures that look like they go together. If you take five pictures of five ki of, the, of your class, and in each one of them, one kid has a tongue out, then the next time he doesn't, but another kid does, or another kid's got his finger up his nose, they're going to stitch all five of those and grab the best face of each kid and give you one photo. You're underwhelmed. <laughs> That's amazing, right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Tough crowd, man. How do they it up, like, you back it up to Google. To Google? Mm -hmm. you put it in print? You can. Uh, so it's, you know, like here's, like this is, for example, it'll create GIFs for you too. So like I took a bunch of pictures of Andrew learning how to play hockey, I stitched them together and created a GIF. Um, you, you know, you can see it creates the, uh, like a collage. It also, if you take a picture of like nature, it's going to say like, oh, I got some sepia for you here. <laughs> or some, some <laughs> off tone we're going to put. You know, and look at my dog's so mysterious. <laughs> There's the kids trying to kayak, but it's going to automatically kind of stitch those together. But also, like I said, it takes those multiple pictures and creates that photosphere or the panoramic view for you, too, if you want. So very cool. That's true. That's, uh, those are uh, auto awesome hacks. We got auto hoffed last year. Do you guys know uh, David Hasselhoff? Let's see. Oh, oh no, is it not showing up? Ah, oh, threats. So what ended up happening, let me see if I just type in Hasselhoff. On April Fool's Day last year, any pictures, ah, uh, too bad. Any pictures that you took on April Fool's Day, David Hasselhoff photobombed them. <laughs> so, like, there's a picture of Andrew, like, looking over, like, a cliff. And like underneath it, uh, hanging there from the tree is like has off like ah, I like taking a picture. It's so yeah, funny. But here's the thing that kind of blew my mind when photos separated from plus. I've never tagged any of my pictures, right? I've never said like, okay, that's me, that's Mackenzie, that was at in Honolulu, that was here or there, right? But if I go in here and I just click on me, it's going to be able to pull every picture that I'm in all the way from the beginning of time, right? The, anything that I've ever uploaded. And here, the weird, where it gets really weird is even if I'm in the background of a picture, it recognizes that and it tags me in it, right? Sorry, those are glamour days, glamour shots. <laughs> but it, with kids, it breaks my brain because it knows their age. So, Kenzie, I'm clicking on a picture of her when she's right now 10 years old. But if I scroll back, it's going to be able to recognize every picture for her going all the way back even to when she was, like, first born. It's going to pull her baby pictures, too. Okay, see, okay now you're not underwhelmed. Good. <laughs> so uh, that's Google Photos. It's, it's amazing. It's uh, super easy to search. And the last thing you can see here is it starts to say, like, things. Okay. Pictures of flowers, pictures of cars, pictures of foods, right, posters. Any pictures with a boat now is going to automatically be sorted for me. Okay, so the days of you having to organize your photos are over. You got an assistant. Google Cloud Print, this is another whiff em. what's in it for me. Um, we could totally use it in class and in a school, but you're going to find, at least for me, that it's a great personal tool. Um, Cloud Print allows you to, whether you have a smart printer or a dumb printer, meaning like wireless, right, um, you can still use Cloud Print and print from anywhere. <clears throat> to print from your home computer, from anywhere in the world, connect your computer to that printer one time, okay? As long as it's either it's got a connection to the Internet, 
<coughs> from uh, from Wire or from the com computer directly. But you log in under your account. You go into settings to add this printer to add the cloud print. Okay. And then once you add that printer from that account, from now on, whether or you're on your mobile device or you're on uh, there it is. Whether you're on a mobile device, uh, somebody else's computer and you're logged in, or even your own computer, it's going to give me the option to print to that printer. OK, that's magic, guys. It won't work over firewall. It won't work over firewall, um, or if you need to do a password. If you have to enter a password, you as soon as you enter that password, all of those queued uh, prints will come out. It's cloud print. <clears throat> all right. Very cool. Hangouts. Now, uh, for the sake of over-transparency, we're just going to talk about this part of the Hangouts, which is the ability to screen share. Or now you also have uh, directly here, I can show something off. If I wanted to add another app, so let's say like lower thirds, for example, there's a Hangout toolbox that allows you to customize what you're, uh, what you're showing. So let's see, here's my lower thirds. There's my logo. If I wanted to choose a different one, I could say yes or no, off or on. But that's going to give me now my own like little lower third label and tag. I could take pictures from here, add other people, uh, make phone calls. But from the SMS text world, so if I, again, come back over to my Google Plus. Over here, if I open this up, which I'm not going to, <laughs> but if I open that up, <coughs> um, I can add, oh, hey, thank you. I can add as many people as I want, as many conversations as you want. Um, so we have, for example, one going right now for Colorado, which is, oh, I'm still, I did it anyway, huh? Here it is. Don't you dare. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for making me go to that site. That's great. Um, anyway, so if you click on, uh, if you add as many people as you want, you can actually call all of them at once. Um, the first 15 people will get in. But then uh, you can also just have a, a Hangout chat going live, you know, so that, for example, if you're using email as a synchronous tool with your teammates or with your coworkers, like you expect an answer that, that day or that hour, you need to switch to Hangouts. So Hangouts is synchronous. Email is not. Um, I know, at least for me, it is a disaster area right now. <laughs> All right, Fit, Google Fit. Anybody using Google Fit? Word. Okay, so it's kind of like uh, it's, it's like a like a Fitbit, but you have to keep your device on you. It really works well with the wearables, but it also works with just a phone. And you can download it, I believe, on the iPhone as well. But it's going to not only track your activities, like your daily activities, but it's going to give you an idea of uh, how much you're exercising over time, too. And now, whereas Fitbit, and Darren over there is one of my Fitbit challengers, um, whereas Fitbit doesn't differentiate between a bike and, uh, and walking. It's just like you're not walking, so it doesn't count, right? This will actually break down your walking, running, biking, and all that stuff. So it's very cool. You can see I ran really far. <laughs> Looks like about a meter. <laughs> <laughs> but it does track all your... And then you can set your own personal goals. You can share uh, with others. But uh, Google Fit is another kind of really cool tool that's under underused or, I guess, not as well known. Another one uh, for individuals is Google for Entrepreneurs. So if you've ever wanted to like start a business or you had an idea for starting something or your students are wanting to start something, so one of their 20-time projects maybe. Google for Entrepreneurs is a, like a, a vehicle or funding agent for you to kind of push that. They'll give you the support. They'll help you tell your story, and they'll help you find funding or um, give you the funding. So very cool. Another one, Google Green. They've made a conscious effort to try to eliminate on, on site. That's kind of what they're famous for, using you know <coughs> recycled tires for floors and old uh, materials for, for this and that, but they're also now trying to uh, kind of impact other spots too, other people. So <clears throat> little things like going carbon neutral, uh, but if you go follow this link, there's a lot of great examples of people that are, are already doing these things for efficiency. They have products that you can buy, for example, all that good stuff. That is Google Green. 
Chrome Web Store, another one that is uh, high on the WIFM. <laughs> and the reason why is because it's very personal what extensions and apps. I know we've been talking extensions and apps probably the last two days. What extensions or what apps or whatever you want to do with your, your browser. So an extension are these things up here. The difference between the extensions and apps in the Web Store, and I just want to clarify this, is extensions are for your browser. So on the web page that you're on, they allow you to do something, right? So like this one, uh, I think it's called What the Font, uh, What Font. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be called What the Font, I promise. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, but it will let, no matter what web, web page you're on, if you go over there, it'll say, okay, that's Arial. Or if you want to find out what the font is on a different page, you can exit. If any of you do any kind of design work, Download this extension, please, and show your kids it because there's nothing worse. It, I, even at a restaurant, when you get a menu and it has like 18 different thoughts on it, you're like, right, it's like, are you sleeping asleep at the wheel? But the Chrome Web Store not only has uh, apps and extensions, but it allows you to uh, kind of do themes as well. You can look at uh, ones that are run specifically by Google, and then you'll get recommendations based off of that as well. Okay, so apps, extensions, themes, and the Chrome Web Store. Different than the Play Store, which we'll talk about too. Google Takeout. So if you are, have uh, dipped your toes in the Goog and you're not as comfortable as you were, and you're like, I want my stuff. I don't want them to have it anymore. I want to take it out. Um, it, they empowered or hired a team of engineers at Google that were called the Data Liberation Group. It's like the coolest <laughs> name ever for, for a new uh, group of engineers. But the Data Liberation Group, their philosophy was uh, threefold. It said, anything that you put on a company or website or a vendor, you should be able to take off. It should also come in an interoperable format, meaning that if it's a, a Google Doc, for example, you should be able to download it as a Word Doc, a PDF, as an Open Office Doc. It should be multiple formats for you to do it. And third one, whatever company it is, they shouldn't be able to keep a copy of it. And so Google Takeout was built so that you can do that. There's no copies kept. If you download your stuff and delete everything in Google, it's gone. Like, gone. We're good. <clears throat> but it's uh, really cool. Feature day liberation, they've uh, worked on being able to take like your Google site and import it into Dreamweaver. They've also worked on uh, some other kind of cool ways to segue in. Another one, and this used to actually be called uh, Teach Parents Tech. It was like my favorite site, and it's gone now. But it's uh, Google Tips, and they keep adding them. They add a new one all the time. But these are little tips and reminders, things for you uh, to kind of go on. It's a great way to have maybe for your homepage. But as they're adding these things, there are details. See, like, you can see this is a document. There's videos. All these different ones. So, like, let's say. Uh, and then here is a little tutorial on how to do it. Okay? Previous tip, next tip. That's Google Tips. And it's awesome. Phew. All right. Work at school. What are you going to use tomorrow? <clears throat> Maybe this. Google CS first. So this was computer science for high school, and then they said, wait, other kids want to do this too. So now they just hit 50,000 students. You can actually have your class get involved, volunteer, jump in there. And uh, it's classes, it's lessons, it's all kinds of options for, for your kiddos. So if you want to say, like, get involved, choose an account. <laughs> I know. There we go. Come on. And you can see here, now it's going to ask you right off the bat, who are you? Are you a volunteer? Do you want to help kids with computer science? Are you like the granny tutor model? Are you an advocate? Do you want to add some money? Do you want to try to bring it to your school? Do you want to start a club? Are you just a teacher that wants to, wants to kind of empower their students to try, to try some of this? So that is uh, Google CS first. Again, it's kind of new-ish, uh, but it's really taking off, and uh, you know, it's another way to empower kids with building cool stuff. Google Keep. Now, uh, this could have gone probably in the personal side. I use it personally more than professionally. They just uh, added the ability for you to now collaborate on a Google Keep note. So if you wanted to kind of quickly take notes with somebody but don't want to put it in Google Docs because you have 5,000 Google Docs, damn. <coughs> um, if you don't want to, and you didn't want to do it because you have all those docs, you could start a Keep note, and it's live and on and in your on your computer, on your tablet, on your phone. All that good stuff is right here um, in the Google Keep. It also allows you to take video notes, photo notes, um, text docs, and where it, this is where it's personal, like we use it personally, um, 
I'll just say it. I know it's. I think my wife's watching, but I'm gonna say it anyway. <laughs> Sorry, honey, if you're watching. Uh, we have a, a Google Keep note because I'm not very good at remembering the milk, right? The metaphor, remember the milk. That used to be a task tool where you could add things to it and it would remind you. Well, Google Keep allows us to have a, a note doc, and then she can set location-based reminders. So, like, as soon as I'm driving past the store, it'll go. Bah! Don't forget to pick up the milk. So you can do that with all kinds of things in Google Keep, uh, but the location. Yeah, it's, it's, it is, right? It's, uh, get out of the doghouse keeper. Um, Google Books. So year, a few years ago, they down, uh, downloaded all the books. Everybody got upset, rightfully so. And so then they reached an agreement with these publishers and said, can we at least share portions of this book or parts of this book to get people to want to buy it, right? Whatever the fair use amount was or whatever the, the individual agrees to. And so now, if you do a book search, you can actually pull in... Uh, kind of samples and text. The catch is, if you find something for your class and you're like, this is all they need, they just need these three pages, it's perfect. If you send that link to them, they won't get the same three pages. Oh, no. Okay, yeah. That's kind of a bummer. So, uh, but it is cool in that, you know, Kern shared this yesterday. You can go in here <coughs> in Google Books. You can actually start to build your own digital library, adding the books uh, that you want on your shelf, uh, being transparent and showing people that you read <laughs> Silly magazines. Um, <laughs> sorry. So, uh, yeah, you could build your own shelf. On the domain side, uh, for your school or district, a librarian can actually upload all of their ISBNs and make them searchable within Google Books for the students as well. Okay? And kind of on the back of Google Books is something called Google Scholar. Um, if you've uh, gone to uh, advanced levels, if you're doing your master's or working on anything past that, uh, you've probably played with school, Google Scholar before. If not, you have to show this to your students because it vets the web for us. It's not going to give you the Perez Hilton blog. It's not going to give you the newspapers with opinions and editorials. It's just going to give you the stuff that's been cited, that's uh, deemed uh, research heavy, and their theme is stand on the shoulders of giants. So you can do a search. You can even check case law. And if you uh, have written, so like, for example, Brookhauser, this book uh, we were just talking about, he can come in and actually see his citations. When was he cited? What was he cited, et cetera. So it's going to be able to pull all that, give you metrics on uh, how many people are clicking on your stuff. All that is really great. The other thing that's tucked away in Scholar is Google Alerts. Okay? Now, Google Alerts on a couple different levels can be super useful in the classroom. You could have students doing a year-long research project set an alert for that project and then they're going to get a daily feed or updated immediately on what um, on their topic. It's going to say, hey, we scoured the web and we found these 12 articles about your topic. The other way to do it for yourself as a teacher would be to do one for your name or your class and see what comes up. You might catch good stuff, too. We were was working with a principal that did this, and he ended up finding positive articles about his school that he didn't even know were out there. It was just written like two days earlier. Posted on Facebook by somebody, you know, unless somebody actually is always searching for that, you don't know. But you can set those alerts and have those fed directly to you immediately or daily if you want. <clears throat> Google News. Now, I loved this tool uh, when I was in the classroom because it gives kind of, a, I don't want to say a totally global perspective to the students, but it does show them that we are in control of our filters and where our information and news comes from. I can personalize this by saying I want more content on education and technology, less on US or less on sports, any of these. I can switch these up. This is completely customizable. And then down here I can even say I want a new topic like, um, let's say, oh, I can't believe I'm getting ready to type this. Okay, we'll say flip classroom. And then I can choose if I want, how much do I want that to go? I want that to be heavy. Always. Anytime there's anything, I want that to come through. I can also adjust my sources. So if I want to add a source, I can do that. Or if I... Whoop. Uh, or I can... Sorry. Um, but I... I don't even remember what I was going to say. All right. But it goes and it is located personally to where you're at. But here's the thing. So now I, I see I'm obviously getting my, my topics on education, all that good stuff. From here... I can choose if I wanted to a completely different edition. So what is something that I love? I personalized this already, but what would it be like if I went to, uh, 
let's say Singapore. It's going to take me to the Singapore news for the day. Same thing, same personalization. Suggested for me, stuff on education, all that good stuff. But you have uh, the ability to kind of redesign or reset up your, uh, your newspaper. Again, free tool to be uh, open for the kids when they first get to school or uh, you know, however you want to use it. <clears throat> During that time of archiving all the books ever um, and being able to do that, uh, if you saw the demo slam yesterday, that Ngram viewer, um, they also archived Life. Not like Life, but Life magazine. So every photo ever taken by Life has been archived and restored by uh, using Google. So if I wanted to search for people, I can search for people here directly. If I wanted to search for time, I can go all the way back to the 1860s. And you talk about primary sources galore, guys. It doesn't get more authentic than pictures of, what's his name? That guy. That guy, yeah. <laughs> There's a civil camp. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. All right, uh, so every picture ever is now uh, free to use, share, and uh, uh, I think even commercially now, if I'm not mistaken. That's Google, and it, uh, again, it's archived or searched by, by decades here, but you can actually go in and search yourself too as well. <coughs> Google's life archive. Google Groups. Now, when I said forgotten buckets, this is probably the least utilized tool uh, in classrooms and schools that needs to be implemented to, like tomorrow. If you live in a transient or if your school has a lot of uh, kids coming in, in and out during the year, Google Groups is your, select, uh, is your solution for content knowledge management. Meaning, let's say you have 25 kids in your class, you enter all those 25 kids into the group, you then get an email address that you can customize, call it Mr. Wacker's class, <clears throat> and then instead of having to share that document or that file or the, the site with all 25 kids, you just share it with the group and they all get it. They all get access to it. If a new kid moves into town, you add them to the group, they then gain access to all the stuff that you've been doing. But a kid leaves town, you then they lose access to all of the all the content that you've been sharing. So very cool, uh, super useful way. Now a lot of teachers I uh, know, for example, this is what, the way we set it up. We used Blackboard at the time, um, and I wanted my discussion boards to be on the kids, on the students' portfolios, on their Google sites. Google Groups allows you to do that. You post a question, you can decide if you want them to be able to upload files, if you just want them to be able to get responses, but it's going to uh, allow you to um, embed that group or that discussion forum into a Google site, so then now you have that interaction on your site as well. Ah, good, okay. Google Safety Center, <laughs> a feature that they uh, rolled out a little while back, but it's a great, it's tips for parents to talk to kids, teachers to talk to students, as well as just for ourselves. Like, what are we doing to limit access to just approved apps and games? How do you do that as a parent? How do you do that as a teacher? Safety Center has got some tips and tutorials for you, okay? Family-friendly results only. See more safety tools. All of these, and again, they're connected directly with partners, but this is another feature that allows you to kind of think a little bit differently about... Um, being the only person on that island trying to trying to keep our kids safe on the web. All right, <clears throat> Chromecast. Uh, I put this in the in the school and work section, but it could easily just as easily go to the personal. Um, Chromecast allows you to you insert the the Chromecast device on any projector. You can put it onto a TV, any monitor, and it's going to allow you to to cast from your phone, your tablet, or your computer. You can now cast your entire desktop. So you can cast your whole, uh, your whole desktop screen for everyone to be able to see. Or students can in now uh, cast individual tabs using this cast extension right here. So this Google Cast allows me to say, I want this tab to go to that TV, and it's going to start streaming. Now, even if I'm streaming 1080p uh, HD video from Netflix, it's going to cache onto the device and I can go to another website, I can close my computer, I can even leave the house, and it's going to keep playing. It's pretty cool. What's the cast extension? Uh, it's so called, it's yeah. It's called Cast. Google Cast. Mm -hmm. So uh, Chromecast, really cool tool. I know um, Apple TV would, would be like an alternative or a counter to this. The difference with Apple TV in this is Apple TV never stops talking to the devices. It's constantly creating, like, what the... Uh, 
you know, data geeks would call like traffic back and forth. Um, whereas this cache is on and it's really low lift on your uh, infrastructure and bandwidth. Phew. All right, Google Translate. Any uh, foreign language teachers in the room? Any foreign language teachers online, Wendy, before I go to Google Translate? I don't know. If you guys want to chat in the Q&A, we got people from Vegas, Roseville, Texas, so lots of and, uh, lots of people having a great time. So. What up? Can we, uh, oh, can we see the chat? Can you share with us? It's the Q&A on the hand. I'm not sure. Oh, if word. But if you want to leave a couple minutes at the end for folks watching, yeah. I'm going to give some shout-outs to them and some questions. Good call, yeah. All right, so Google Translate. Um, there's a couple of reasons why I, I love this tool. It's built, it gets, it gets better, so it's got that kind of um, machine that's always working. So if we don't like it, oops, wrong one. If you don't like it, it's, it's going to be getting, uh, getting better and better each time. But on Chrome, it has some built-in features that you don't have if you're using Safari or Firefox. One of them is if I wanted to say, like, detect a language or if I say English, I can actually speak into my computer, and it's going to then translate my text for me. Okay, so I'll say, I love Hangouts with Wendy. Okay, and then, and then, is this close, anyone? Well, let's listen to it. Then you can listen to it. Sounds just like me. <laughs> uh, if there are uh, foreign language teachers, I want to let you know that if it's wrong, you have the ability to make it better. You can actually say, this word is wrong, and you can click and change the text if you want. Um, or you can, oops, you can even come over and say, like, I choose to help improve it. The other thing is you'll notice this little star <coughs> directly here. I can save my translations, and I can enter them into what's called my passbook. So when I do that and I go to my translator toolkit, all of the different... <coughs> Is it? Oh, it's because I'm logged into multiple accounts. There it is. <clears throat> All of the ones that I've saved, anything that I've bookmarked or that I've wanted to be able to come back to will be available. So if you're traveling and you want to like go through that the book of all the core things you're going to learn or you're going to need to say, put them on your phone or put them into Translate through your computer and then they'll be on your phone. So you can just walk up to somebody and hit play. I'm sorry. If that's cheating, I'm sorry, language teachers. <laughs> Uh, Google Tour Builder, a great tool. I love uh, Google Tour Builder. We've talked about this, uh, I think, yesterday a little bit as well. But it allows you to not only kind of build the tours, but if you've ever wanted to do like a, like a geo lit trip uh, or kind of have students figure out where these locations are, you can really quickly build a story and, and tell your story <laughs> using Google Tour Builder. All right, let's get geeky now. Omnibox. Google calls it the Omnibox. Sounds mysterious, right? That's this address bar. We call it the address bar. But the Omnibox has a couple of really cool uh, features that set it apart from others. One is you'll notice that the traditional file, new, edit is missing from the top. They tuck that over here in what they call the hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. This thing. Okay? That's where you'll find your new tab, new window, all that good stuff, bookmarks. So. One, you get a little bit more space. <clears throat> the other thing is, if I come in, you'll notice all my extensions are here. If I come in here and I right click, and I say edit search engines, full transparency, be careful. Every website that you ever go to that has a search this site box in it falls into your possibilities for becoming your new search engine if you want, which is kind of cool. Uh, but that alone isn't where it separates. Here's where it gets really good. If I say I wanted to uh, search Amazon, and I've been there before, and I know that uh, they have a search this site, as long as I put, here, what is it? As long as I add equals percentage S at the end, I can now do a search using whatever shortcuts I want to choose. Like you see, I have right here Drive, Drive Party is my shortcut. Nice. <laughs> and I can do a search from Drive. Google Translate, I can go directly there. So once I've set that up, if I come over to my tab and I say drive, right? And then, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it says press tab to search drive party. So I hit tab, 
and we'll just say blended learning. It's going to take me directly to my drive and do the search for me. Okay, it gets, if you uh, set it up with calendar, you can actually go in and say, all right, new tab, Cal. And then again, it says add new event to calendar, tab. And then I'm going to say dinner with Mama Whack. Not, uh, let's see, it was today, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Okay, and then I hit enter. I don't have to go to my calendar. It's going to take me there and create the event, and all I have to say is, yep, that looks good. Dinner with Mama Whack today, 7 o'clock, done. It's saved. Okay, so another really cool way to create shortcuts and to save time, but also to kind of be able to leverage searching. There's a, a tool called GoofRam, <laughs> which takes Wolfram Alpha, which is the math search box, and Google and puts them side by side each other. So again, I've set up the shortcut goof. I hit tab, and then if I just want to say integer, it's going to not only search um, Google, but it's also going to search Wolfram side by side. Oops, OK. All right, tough crap. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot, I know. More geekiness, Google Analytics. Um, I. Okay, let's see. I, yeah, it's fine. I'll do it. I'll go in there. <laughs> Over transparency again. Google Analytics is another free tool that allows you to um, be able to track and find out exactly who's coming to your site, where they're coming from, how old they are, what their interests are, how long they stay, um, all that good stuff. So, again, if you sign in for free and you go in, and we'll just pick on me because it's ridiculously low. <clears throat> but if I'm looking at my audience overview, it looks like 99.3% of them are brand new, which is good. That's what you want, right, sometimes. But they have a bounce rate of 82%. That's not good. They don't even stay on a whole page. Their average pages are 0 0.9. <laughs> this is starting to sound kind of sad. Um, but I, I could keep going, and I could check the behavior, new versus returning, engagement, where are they going, what are they using, are they using uh, which browser, which operating system are they using, you can see that the majority of them are using Chrome. I can keep going, see if they're using mobile. It now allows you to check active users, who's on your site right now. Um, students, if they publish their portfolios, this is a great tool, and it's Fisher Price easy to set up. Demographics, this is where it gets kind of creepy, too. So if you're logged in, understand that your profile is being is, is known, right? So I can see here that overview and the age of uh, people and what they're interested in when they come to my site. So most of the people that come for less than one page, 5.5% <laughs> of them are into sports. All right? And you can keep going and check your own behaviors, uh, the behaviors that they have, all kinds of good stuff. It's free, uh, it's super easy, and it's a great way to kind of bring that flattening of the world for the kiddos. <clears throat> for example, I just learned this, uh, and I'll show you how in a second, but did you know that when a student publishes a video on YouTube, 60% of the viewers are going to come from out of the country, out of, it, out of his country, right, or her country. <laughs> Google Fonts, another kind of geeky uh, tool. You can create your own fonts if you wanted to create your own, or you can download uh, fonts that are already there. There's thousands, 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 so many different ones, but it's, oops, too far, but it's, um, Really cool way just to see kind of what's out there. If you have students that like to try to create, uh, you know, their own like handwriting or they want to create their own calligraphy, if it's not out there and it's published, they get to name it and it's all theirs. <clears throat> Wearables, super geeky. So glass was uh, not really shut down, but kind of diverted. And the the industry that I don't know if you guys know this, but the industry that's using it like rap like uh, rapid adoption is uh, the health industry, doctors. Doctors are using this. Dentists are using this because they can bring somebody else into the room with them live in real time by using their glass. The other thing uh, for a doctor, one thing, and I'm not a doctor, but <laughs> the, my, my friend is, though. Um, he said, the thing they hate is the paperwork. Every time the, uh, somebody comes in, you're, literally as soon as they leave, they have to fill out like two pages worth of paperwork, right? So they're taking notes, and Google Glass has an app for doctors that actually records and then translates and transcribes those notes onto a document for them so that if you say something to your doctor, you don't have to hope that he took the notes. It's going into your record immediately. <clears throat> oh, yes, thank you. That was That's amazing, right? <laughs> um, oops, wrong way. The uh, other thing is there are... I keep doing that thing. I can scroll down. Sorry, guys. 
extending Android to wearable. So watch uh, 360 watch, really cool stuff. I know uh, our our team is is high into uh, the wearables right now. Just access, you know, if you guys went to Juan's session, Juan barely ever pulls out his phone. He just has his watch. He can make phone calls, all that stuff. YouTube trends. So if you were interested in that little uh, stat nugget I dropped, this is where you can find those. You can come in and look at what's hot, and you can see what's most shared. You can go into the map and the blog, but from YouTube, at the very, very bottom of the, of the site, all the way down where you can turn safety on or off, by the way, do you know this, guys? Safety off or on, it stays with your, oops, it stays with your, um, with your searches. So it'll be, if you do a search, if you put safety on, it'll stay on. You can check your history from here. Or down here where it says press. This is the good stuff. Right here. YouTube has more than 1 billion users. 300 hours of video are uploaded every minute. Number of hours people are watching on YouTube each month is 50% year over year. It goes up. <clears throat> so if you are getting your information from here, and students are wanting to share information here, a great way to do it is uh, going in here and sharing, looking at who's using YouTube, what are the trends, what's hot. Google Wallet. So this has been around for about, uh, I think, four years now. Uh, initially, you could set it up with your bank account. You could set it up with a credit card. Mm -hmm. You could have them send you a, uh, a credit card if you wanted. Um, it works on your phone, all that good stuff. But you can also now in a Gmail, so if, eight, if you email your colleague after lunch because they bought and you have to pay them back, you can actually attach money from your Google Wallet and email it to them directly. <coughs> Advanced search, super geekiness. So we all know how to do a Google search, right? You go into google.com and do a search. If you wanted to do an advanced search, you actually have to search first and then switch to advanced. So I'll just stick with the theme. I'll go blended learning again. And now over here, I have, well, I'll start over here. I can switch between images. I can even say I want search tools anytime, all results, location-based. But under this gear, it's not a flower. I don't care what anybody says. Under this gear, I can come down and say advanced search. Now, <clears throat> that allows me then to search by file type, by uh, access, meaning Creative Commons license or not, by individual text. You can do like an if or, like if they say this or that. Um, and then what that ends up looking like, and man, I so wish that I had this when I first started teaching. But if I come in here and I just say file type PowerPoint, and we'll say rainforest. It's only going to pull PowerPoints of the rainforest. If you don't like PowerPoint, you can do Google Docs. You can do Google Slides, drawings, anything public. It'll search and find for you. Um, you can also do PDFs. You can do videos. All that. So that's uh, another advanced search feature. Um, if uh, any of you have the ability to um, go back in time. There's a feature that is gone now, but it was my favorite, and it was the ability for you to kind of uh, limit the results based on grade levels. That's gone now. Kind of a bummer, yeah. Just didn't get any, any care. Um, Google Trends. So, again, this is a, its own site. You can actually check all the different trends across the world uh, using data visualization, Google Maps, and uh, just public, oh, geez, public information. You can go into Google Trends and check out what's going on um, around the world. If you like to create, though, which is kind of the cool part, there's some really cool things. Think with Google has, <coughs> has uh, given us uh, a platform to be able to start to kind of be, have our own beta test, right? So if I go into this Think with Google, this is the creative gal gallery. You go in there and you can actually vote on ideas and give feedback on things that are being launched. Also, Think with Google has other, not, it's not just the creative, you can look at learn about how to make unskippable ads. You can also come in and figure out four new moments every marketer should know. These are all things that are being shared and it's uh, you can kind of check in your industry specifically if you want to find out what's trending in education. So I go think with Google and then education is going to give me a bunch of information about what's trending and also who's working on cool stuff uh, either in partnership or on their own. So Think with Google is another really cool tool. Google Maps Indoor. What? 
<laughs> underwhelmed. This is amazing. So you can actually take your school building and have a map indoor. By you identify the school, so you find it. So if I go to let's see, is this a link? No, it's just an image. <laughs> let's try. It. So if I come over here, and there it is. And I wanted to say, <clears throat> get a map of Redondo Union. Um, I can come in and upload a JPEG ping PDF file that I already have and exists in, and it's going to transpose that and build me a map based on that inside. So you can have indoor maps now. Google Street Art. Uh, this is, uh, comes out of the Cultural Institute and the Google Art Project. Again, a really cool uh, tool. So if you come over, you can see kind of what's buzzing, what's, uh, what's hot in art and in trending. So if you wanted to say, okay, I want to I wanna see what's going on in Buenos Aires. So this is the street art. It's going to actually take me through. Again, just like Juan was showing you yesterday, it's going to give me a little tour of the area. A nonprofit organization founded to promote urban artists and raise awareness of their work. Using this innovative Google tool, we are going to take a virtual tour through various neighborhoods of Buenos Aires. An abortive attempt to build a highway back in the 1990s left the northern part of the city full of half-destroyed walls. These walls... So that's Google Street Art. If there's a graffiti or if it's been tagged and uh, identified, and <clears throat> then they're, they're going to try to tell that story. Again, part of the Google Cultural Institute, totally uh, worth the extra time to check it out. Google App Engine, putting uh, app building in the hands of kiddos. There's some sessions on that uh, here. I t definitely recommend it. But it's, again, a free tool, and it actually has tutorials to teach you how to teach children or for you just to learn and play. So it's a uh, Google App Engine. It's free, totally worth uh, the time to explore. Google Ideas, this is connecting users and experts that have uh, passion for something and then letting them chase it together through uh, funding or through Google's resources, et cetera. So again, all of these uh, ideas that are being launched, different projects like the data visualization of the small arms. You can come in here and actually look, look at that. You can go in and see uh, trending data as well. But that is uh, another tool, Google Ideas, that's trying to, again, connect multiple people with passions that have, uh, have an idea. <coughs> Google Story Creator. If, again, now I'm not sure. Uh, I would love. I would actually love to be able to see what this looks like at a middle school, high school level. For us, the way that we use it, and the way I share it with teachers, is for teaching dialogue. It's a great, fun way to do it. So you can get started, and you can see as it does. You can choose the names of the people that are going to be in uh, in your story that you're creating. Everything you type will then play back. You can even add music to it to kind of give it a storytelling. So if I say, uh, let's say Whacker, and then Code is over there, and then Darren's over here, and now I say write the story. It's going to let me choose what I want to say. This is a cool tool, huh? Right, and then I can keep going if I want, or I can switch to the next character, and like Chris say, sure, I guess. But then it's going to play this back for me. If you <clears throat> have seen this before, there was yeah, I'm going to leave this page. There was uh, a Google Story Builder built as an advertisement. Let's see, where is it? Here we are. It's. Okay, come on, up it up. Let's try it on here. Okay, psych. Oh. All right. Yeah, so um, you'll just have to uh, trust me. Um, mm -hmm. I think I, I think I can actually find it real quick. Let's see, it was Hall and Oats. Here we go. Uh, for being patient. Okay, so here is an example of uh, that they share for that. Oh, here she comes. She's a scary lady. She's an angry tiger. 
She's a man gobbler. She's a man eater. All right, and so that's a uh, app. Google Docs Story Builder, it doesn't let you download it as a video file, but it'll give you a link that you'll have and be able to use for uh, forever, ever. And that's Story Creator, another uh, tool. Google Web Designer, this was just released a couple months ago. This is for uh, your hardcore designers, uh, people that are working in Flash and Dreamweaver and all that, and wish Google would build something. They did. Unfortunately, though, it's software, meaning that you have to download it onto your computer, and it doesn't run on Chromebooks. Oh, the irony. But it's awesome. Um, it actually is built so that you can go in and build HTML5 ads, uh, you know, um, objects on your websites, et cetera, without having any experience in Dreamweaver, in CS, in any of that. It uses the traditional what you see is what you get interface. And so you can either, <laughs> it's awesome. And it automatically, because it's HTML5, will adjust for you on different screens. Um, and you can either, if you really are hardcore and love to, uh, to code, oops, you can go ahead and actually still add all that code and write all that out. If you're visual, though, you can actually drag and drop the image and see what it's going to look like on the ad or in, in the box. Okay. <clears throat> and it's a free download. Uh, Google Web Designer, it's a really cool uh, way to, you know, again, if you have kids that are building websites from scratch, it's a great way to start. <clears throat> if, you want, if you have this tool, too, you don't even have to have a server. This is the advanced geeky part. I'm not, there's no way I have time to go all the way into it. But you don't even have to have a server. You don't have to have a website yet, any of that stuff. A student could literally open up a Google Doc or, and Google Web Designer, write out their, all their code, all the stuff that they want, or uh, add all their images, then save it to Google Drive, make it public, and it is a site. They actually can launch a website from Google Drive. Very cool. If, uh, if you're interested in that, I would, I would Google it. Um, there's a bunch of tutorials out there on how to do it. <clears throat> Another uh, Google Cultural Institute is the uh, art project. And so the Google art project took the same technology and cameras that they use for getting, you know, super close in from, from space or uh, super close in on Google Drive, but it, they did that in museums all around the world. So I, I don't care how rich uh, the students are in your class, there's a chance that they're never going to go to a lot of these really cool galleries and museums. Now, if your students aren't rich, it's your obligation to bring this stuff into your classroom. So if you, for example, are a huge Van Gogh fan and you want to chase that passion with your 7th and 8th graders, you can come in and actually look at collections based on it. You can look at individual work. So if I want to look at Starry Night, this is kind of underwhelming. You're like, great, Wacker. It's a picture of, 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 of art, right? But if I wanted to, I can drill in and zoom in all the way to the cracks in the paint, guys. So imagine, what a, great, what a great project. You just take a picture of this, share it with your students, and they have to figure out where it's from. <clears throat> Jim still showed me that. Very cool. Um, you can go in and check you know, your different, uh, uh, any different art project that you want, any different gallery, museum. You can actually tour it if you want. Very cool. So the Cultural Institute also, uh, in places and views, allows you to take tours of other things as well. Google Maps Transit, if you are uh, somebody that provides this, this isn't looking for it. If, you, if you're looking for a bus, all you have to do is say bus route from blank to blank and it'll come up. But if you are somebody that is like an Uber driver or somebody that's looking for transit, you can actually get published on Google Maps Transit and become part of um, this network. Google Ventures, again, <clears throat> investing in companies that are doing really cool things or they have a passion or are trying to give back, they're able to put money back into the community and the public by uh, saying, what's your idea? Let's, let's invest in that. Oh, that's timely. I just mentioned Uber. <clears throat> Google Design, another one that's not like web designer, but it's tips and tricks around different design uh, hacks, things that people are doing. If you're wondering how to design for iOS, tutorial, step-by-step -step things to make sure that it works. Again, Google Design, a free uh, tool and resource. Submit content. If you're looking for uh, content that you want to be out there and published, you can actually go in and submit it directly to Google. If you're like, they're not finding it, you can submit it there. <clears throat> That's uh, Google Submit Content. All right, what are some of the fun things, though, the last four minutes? <laughs> Google Easter eggs. Are you aware of uh, what an Easter egg is? Lots of sites do it, not just Google. 
Um, but if you were to go in and say, punch in the Konami code on random websites, eventually one of them will do something like blow up or self-destruct or something cool. Uh, the Konami code is what? Oh, yes. None of Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Yeah, left, right, left, right. Be a select start if you had a friend with you. Or just start. Um, but it allows you to do that. If I want to do a search, there's some little hidden Easter eggs tucked away in Google, too, like askew. Get it? Stilted? <laughs> find Chuck Norris. That's a good one. All right. Google won't find Chuck Norris. Knows you don't. He finds you. All right. There's an, uh, another one if you wanted to uh, for, let's see, uh, do a barrel roll. There's one. And then if you wanted to do an image search and have that, have some. Here we go. Now I'm going to go in here and say, um, let's see, Atari Breakout. And it's going to take those images and create a breakout, uh, Atari Breakout game for me. Oh. Right? That's kind of cool. There it is. Boom. Okay. And I'm just going to blow all these up. Okay. I, I, I'll just keep playing if you let me. <laughs> but uh, this link will take you to a bunch of them. Um, you saw in the Hangout earlier, um, if you have an open Hangout and you type in back, uh, forward slash pony stream, it's going to send ponies running across the screen on everybody's uh, chat at the time. If you say, it's too funny. I know. Uh, forward slash shy dino, a little dinosaur comes out and peeks out. Uh, forward slash pitchforks, as a bunch of uh, angry mob comes running across. <laughs> forward slash um, uh, bike shed changes the color of the background. Thanks, Darren. So really cool stuff uh, kind of tucked away um, on sites. If you uh, open up a spreadsheet, for example, I'll just quickly open a new tab. Oh, I'm going to run out of time. I knew it. And I say plus. Oh, Windows, I think this needs to be a two-hour session. Uh, so if I, if I come over here and I just say, all right, P, come on, R, I, D, E, what? Mind blown. I love it. So those are Easter eggs kind of tucked away. Test tube. If you want to know what the beta projects that the uh, YouTubers are, are doing right now, for example, right now they're working on 4K video that's like super high def, like beyond high def. Mo most computers can't handle it. You can do that now. When they started testing 3D, that was in test tube first. You can also, right now, if you go to test tube, download the new YouTube player. That's a whole new look and feel for you. Um, YouTube editor, youtube.com slash editor, whether you have a Chromebook or a PC or a Mac, students have a video editor in their browser. So they don't have to download uh, you know, iMovie or Windows Movie Maker. Um, if this, then that is a, is a tube connector. We used to have to use Yahoo Pipes for this. It's say, like if I say I want to take a picture, every time I take a picture on Instagram, I want to be able to back it up and archive it in uh, my Google Drive. You could set that up in if this, then that. So sorry. Oh, no, you're good. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, I'm uh, out of time, but so, uh, so much good stuff. The slide deck is yours. You're more than uh, welcome to kind of go in and play. I will say Google Music just upped their limit. You can upload 40,000 songs for free and access them anywhere on the Internet. Except uh, you can upload Taylor Swift, but you can't listen to her. <laughs> Classroom, Google a day. I'm just going to keep going. You guys could go. <laughs> Uh, it allows you to set up, you can play games and ask questions. People say, what's an ungoogleable question? 